Thanks for tuning in to our most recent live stream, Anxiety, Depression. Is it truly something that we were just born with? Or are there underpinnings? Can chronic, unbridled, or unrelenting stress over an extended period of time be leading folks to panic disorders, anxiety disorders, and depression? Stay tuned, you'll find out. Thanks again, joining us for another live stream. Another difficult subject. We're going to talk today about the stress response when it's impaired, uh, an exaggerated stress response, prolonged stress, how that actually leads to anxiety and depression. Uh, often um, the medical community will just look at this and say, well, you have a genetic disposition, um, it's hereditary. That's not to say that there aren't some components of that. That's not to say that there aren't some issues with uh, poor methylation pathways that open up that door. But I think we have to see that um, impaired stress over an extended period of time opens the door. It's a gateway to anxiety and depression. So let's just cover some real, real basic topics. I, I want to mention that we've in, in some ways talked about this subject in the past. Uh, this one I'm going to try to bring it a little more concise and speak very specifically to what I think you can do from an ABC's standpoint and perspective. Number one, prolonged stress. What does it do? Well, it increases inflammation. It increases inflammation. That opens the door to atherosclerosis, to more cardiac damage, damage to the uh, vascular walls, and we'll talk specifically about how it damages the brain. So what am I, what, what am I saying about the stress response? Let's go back. Stress is not bad. Um, it is actually normal. It's common to man. We need to have a stress response. The key players in this, though, are cortisol, which we've taught you before, catecholamines, adrenaline, noradrenaline. So are these things bad? No, they're not necessarily bad. What we have is difficulties when this is unbridled for an extended period of time Cortisol spirals out of control. It is overwhelming the body. Now it opens up the door for me to get fat. It fattens me. It damages the artery walls. It impairs my uh, stress response going forward. And we'll get to how it impairs the brain, even serotonin activity, neurogenesis, and then how I think it opens the door to anxiety and depression. So cortisol, is it evil? No taught you this in the past. We need it. But an exaggerated response where it's being produced ex it, it intensely over extended periods of time, it then, this stress response as it's impaired, then opens the door um, to difficulties. What are some ex examples maybe of an exaggerated stress response? PMS. I can't get up in the morning. <clears throat> I'm more irritable and more emotional. I can't just seem to just get a grip on things. I, little things set me off. I'm, I'm not nearly as responsive to distress as I was in the past. Maybe I crave carbs more. I crave sugars more. I crave salty foods more. All kind of cardinal signs and symptoms. Now you would say, so how do I know if I'm under prolonged stress? Well, I would say stress often that is related to maybe financial difficulties that are ongoing maybe continuous marital problems. It could be problems with a child um, where there's a continual... See, we're, we're, we're meant to be able to handle stressors that... Boy, these markers really work, I tell you. <laughs> we're meant to be able to handle stress when it peaks, cortisol output, high stress response, and then it drops and then it peaks. So we have this going on. And so these are recovery phases for us, right? The lower periods. But what happens for many of us, we don't have recovery phases. For many of us, the stress response is more linear. It's more exaggerated, continuous. So you don't have these peaks where you can recover. So when I don't recover... The body doesn't have a chance to remake some of the damage that's been done or undo some of the damage that's been done, and now I have impairment going forward. So cortisol, high stress response, high adrenal output over an extended period of time, exaggerated due to personal life trauma issues 
that are ongoing. Okay. Cortisol next is paradoxical. Well, why would it be paradoxical? What do I mean by that? Well, without it, um, you can't live. You, you won't get off of your sofa. You won't get out of bed. So there is a paradox that's associated with cortisol. You can't live with it. Exaggerated. You can't live without it. Without it, you're dead as a doornail with too much of it. We need a medium, right? We don't need it up here. We can't have it down here. We need to stay in this range. That's where the problems come in. And then that's, an, that's when we have this exaggerated response that begins to affect, I think, clearly, depression, anxiety disorders, panic. You often see panic and anxiety uh, rise and rear its head to individuals maybe in their teens, uh, dealing with a lot of issues, peer pressures, issues maybe with drugs, alcohol, um, later in their 20s, married, maybe school, worrying about future and job, maybe into their 30s where maybe the marriage is not working out the way they thought it was. I mean, it, it usually, these, these states of panic, and these states of chronic anxiety, often they are exacerbated by undercurrent of what we see here today. Okay, over the, pro over the period of time, what then do we see? What's really happening? Well, what you see is the neurons in the brain become impaired. So these neurons, these, these dendrites, the, the collection of neurons, um, they secrete serotonin, they secrete dopamine, neurotransmitters of balance and harmony. What happens over time, these neurons become impaired they're not nearly as connective. High stress, cortisol blunts that effect. So now when they release and they're attempting to communicate and send the signals across this cleft, the synaptic cleft, um, when I have impairment or a drawing back of these neurons, these, th these neuron caps are not nearly as healthy because of essential fatty acid deficiencies, excessive cortisol, nutrient deficits. They become damaged. Now it becomes very difficult to send the messaging across these clefts and communicate. Hence, over the course of time, I think you open the door. I, I want to say this as well. These are not usually singular an aspect. It's not just about the stress. That, because you might have to throw in alcohol use, marijuana use, not enough nutrients, horrible diet, a lot of white and refined, pizza every night, uh, bagels for breakfast, coffee, tons of coffee, tons of sugar. So the point is, there can be an exaggerated stress response over the span of time. It doesn't automatically lead to anxiety and depression. See, if my nutrient base, my support base, my coping mechanisms are all within cue and check, I will have, I will manage this exaggerated stress response. It will not become impaired over time, right? Reduces the tendency. So it becomes really a combination of issues. An exaggerated stress hormone response, exaggerated adrenal output, cortisol, high levels of incredible levels of stress, combine that with poor sleep, poor nutrients. Then as it damages the neurons, you have an open cascade for difficulties. Okay, the other areas. Often, some, what are some of the other maybe Outward manifestations or clinical signs. I don't remember things well. Short-term memory goes. Uh, my behavioral flexibility is gone. Um, and as I mentioned, I, I have these neurons that become damaged. What can we do? What are some possible things that you can do? Well, I think, um, number one, just from a basic standpoint, um, you need to make sure that you have a quality multivitamin on board. You know, we like the Daily Essentials because it's a quality prep. It's not encumbered by binders and fillers. They're bioavailable, absorbable minerals. We've got the quatrifolic, the methylated form of bees. Um, bees are important to the stress hormone response. So now certainly you can do like a coenzyme B complete, but for, for the sake of argument here today, let's just focus on the ABCs. Now, I'm going to do a follow-up to this that will be more detailed 
about how to manage overall the stress response. This is about the basics today. This is just the fundamentals. Exaggerated stress response over a period of time. How do, what, what do I do about it in a very basic sense? You must have adequate micronutrients. That's what you would consider a quality multiple to be. Number two, you've got to have adequate buffered C. Buffered C is involved in the manufacture, actually in the disposition of cortisol. So C plays a critical role in how you manage the stress response in cortisol. So C is not just only for your immune system. It doesn't only just raise your detoxification pathways. It's not only just structural uh, precursor to collagen matrix for your skin, for your bones, for your tendons and ligaments. I mean, the list goes on. It's actually documented to enhance dopamine production in the brain. And we know clearly C, for example, has been documented that if they give it to marathon runners or long distance runners, give them two grams of C right after their event compared to a group that did not receive a bolus of vitamin C and the and this, uh, norepinephrine, epinephrine levels and the cortisol levels in the unsupplemented group are much higher. Exaggerated stress response. So C not only helps to support production, but it can actually help to attenuate an exaggerated response. ABCs, more sophisticated to come in part two. ABCs, if you don't have adequate multivitamins on board and buffered vitamin C, and this multivitamin must be in the coenzyme form of the Bs, I must add, you're going to have trouble in River City. The next portion that we move to, believe it or not, omegas, once again, oh, it's great for your joints, it is great for in the inflammatory pathways, for the circulatory system, but it also helps with an exaggerated adrenal response. We see that imbalances to omega-3s and omega-6s make us more susceptible to an exaggerated stress hormone response. Have to have plenty of the omegas. Pantothenic acid, I forgot to mention, in um, the multi is critical. Now, again, in version two of this, I'll talk a little bit more about this at a higher level, a little more sophisticated. But know that the bees are critical in my mind uh, because bees help you to mitigate stress response, how the body deals with the stress response, and how the adrenals make these compounds to help you with the stress response. Uh, next, physical activity and exercise. I have an article um, somewhere here. I'm not real sure where I left it. It might be over on that far. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, very critical because the, um, I just talked about this on our, on our broadcast. It won't matter to you when you're listening to this, but just the other day. Um, but here's what it basically said. Lifestyle cancels out the stress response. Elizabeth Blackburn, PhD, at, um, not real sure where she is, I believe, uh, uh, University of California at San Francisco, showed that um, we can document on the telomeres, on the end of your chromosomes, that the aging process is sped up by an exaggerated stress response or high stress response. And we know then, I believe, that it opens the door. It's not solely the cause for anxiety and depression, but it opens that door. It facilitates anxiety and depression, but it also speeds up the aging process. She documented and said, look, if we just get people to eat better, sleep better, <laughs> move better, um, you can attenuate, you can reduce the damage to those telomeres. In other words, you don't have anywhere near the sped up process of aging. She basically is exactly what she said. Um, a, a court, if we look at their adverse stress response, the study participants who exercised well, slept well, ate well, had less telomere shortening. We see the same parallel to the stress response. Lastly, um, if you don't have a pet, get a pet. If you're under a lot of stress, there, I mean, there, there's literature that just says just walking your dog is helpful. Okay? DHEA. I think I'm going to hold that for the next one. DHEA um, and, and your diet, I think, are, are, are really key here. But I'll go into this a little bit later. But DHEA can counterbalance excessive cortisol and that cortisol response. 
but your diet also plays a key role in here. If you eat a ton of carbs and a ton of sugars and I drink alcohol before I go to bed because I think it relaxes me and it calms me down, that's all a negative, negative uh, factor. Bottom line, <clears throat> you can mitigate, you can keep at bay some of the major stress effects that are continually going to want to wreak havoc in your body if I manage what I eat well, minimize your carbs, your sugars, your salts, eat complex carbs, clean proteins, quality fats. Understand that a way to de-stress, I would tell you I'd like to see you in the Bible and reading the Bible and reading Psalms. Pantothenic acid is part of the B family and the coenzyme forms of Bs and the methylated form of folic acid. The omegas, buffered vitamin C, this is a ABC's approach. So know that if you've developed panic and anxiety disorders later in life, it's not necessarily just from you were just bound to have it. Lifestyle and things that are happening. If you're under tremendous levels of stress for a long period of time, let us help you with managing that because if it hasn't already opened a door to panic disorders and anxiety and depression, it just may. Let me read you a quick a proverb, just as a word of encouragement, Proverbs 16.32 says, Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control, than one who can take a city. Self-control, the Bible teaches us, and discipline is more important than a warrior and one that can literally overtake an entire city. It doesn't matter what type of success that we have in life, no matter what walk of life, no matter how successful, no matter what we attain. The Bible says that if you lack self-control and that if you lack discipline, it will bring you to ruin. Often we make mistakes. We make bad decisions. And the Bible is very clear. You can't lack discipline and self-control and not expect that at some point in time in your life that it brings destruction to you. Just a word of wisdom. I was like what James McDonald said. God doesn't say don't do it because he wants to hurt you or harm you. He doesn't want you to hurt yourself. God bless you. Thanks for being with us.